Now for the details, and His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Russian President Vladimir Putin on his victory in the presidential elections for a new presidential term. His Majesty congratulated the President, wishing him success in carrying out his presidential duties to achieve the aspirations of the Russian people for further prosperity. He hailed the deep-rooted bilateral relations and the high level in all fields, affirming his aspiration to continue working with President Putin to enhance the historical relations and bolster cooperation for the interest of both countries and their peoples. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also sent a cable of congratulations to Russian President Putin on his re-election. His Royal Highness wished President Putin success in carrying out his presidential duties, leading Russia and its people to further progress and prosperity. He commended Bahraini Russian relations and their progress, stressing the commitment to strengthening ties for further common interests. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qudaybiya Palace today in commemoration of Bahrain Youth Day held annually on March 25th. The cabinet affirmed the country's commitment to supporting the national workforce to continue contributing to the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The cabinet then discussed the implementation of His Royal Highness directives on the opening, restoration and development of 32 mosques belonging to the Sunni and Jafari Waqf across all governorates and noted the efforts of the relevant authorities. His Royal Highness directed the relevant authorities to carry on with the mosque development plans throughout the year. Then they followed up on the availability of consumer goods in the market and the stability of prices and highlighted legislative efforts to protect competitiveness. The Cabinet highlighted the efforts of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the commercial sector to ensure price stability and the abundance of consumer goods during this holy month. The Cabinet then followed up on the events and tourism packages that will be announced as part of Manama's selection as the Gulf Tourism Capital for 2024. The Cabinet highlighted the importance of tourism and its role as a private priority sector in economic development. And marking the 79th anniversary of the League of Arab States, the Cabinet highlighted the prominent role of the League in enhancing cooperation between Arab countries. The Cabinet welcomed the adoption of a resolution by the UN General Assembly on measures to combat Islamophobia, affirming the Kingdom's firm stance towards international efforts that promote tolerance and dialogue between religions, cultures and civilizations and safeguard global peace. The Cabinet discussed and approved several memoranda. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects regarding the development of regulatory procedures for infrastructure projects. Another submitted by the Minister of Interior on the achievements of the Information and E-Government Authority for 2023, including in uh, digitization with government e-services, reaching 680 services across all channels. A third memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for League and uh, Legislative Affairs on a draft agreement amending the framework agreement to finance the second phase of the project to improve water transmission and distribution from El Dor station. A fourth memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to grant the National Institute for Human Rights Observer status in several national committees. A fifth submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft MOU on the future of transportation between the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications and the Saudi Ministry of Transport and Logistic Services. And the final memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. 
The Cabinet then looked note on the, or took notes on the following ministerial reports, a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Legal Affairs on a proposal mechanism for publishing translated legislation on the website of the Legislation on Legal Opinion Authority. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqaf on the statistics of the court's performance, implementation and documentation during the year 2022-2023. The Cabinet then took note of what was stated in the report submitted by the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture regarding the 11th edition of the Bahraini Farmers Market for 2023-24 season. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the opening, restoration and development of 32 mosques belonging to the Sunni and Jafari Waqf across all governorates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa inaugurated the Mohammed Bahloul and his wife Fatima Al Khaja mosques, the first mosque in Salman City. His Highness highlighted the King's unwavering support to the development and preservation of the country's places of worship. He recognized the ongoing support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister to develop mosques in all governorates and to ensure the adoption of modern and Islamic designs in the rebuilding and enhancement of mosques. His Highness noted the success achieved in building, restoring and preserving places of worship to date highlighting the orders of His Royal Highness within the previous two years. He highlighted the commitment of officials from the Sunni and Jafari Waqf to swiftly implement the directives of His Royal Highness to build mosques in cooperation with several authorities and volunteers and wish the officials success in developing mosques and thank the volunteers for their donations. The chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed al Hajir, affirmed the kingdom's commitment to preserving and developing places of worship under the leadership of His Majesty, supported by His Royal Highness. He expressed gratitude to His Highness for inaugurating the mosque and noted that this was the first mosque to be built in Salman City and it is a crucial element of the mosque development plan. The Behloul and Khaja families expressed their gratitude to His Majesty and His Royal Highness for their support and ongoing commitment to building and restoring places of worship across Bahrain, as well as their thanks to His Highness for the inauguration. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, along with his several senior officials, were also present. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, deputized the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Deputy Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, and Member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, to attend the conclusion of the Bahrain Breeders' Show, Emirates Arabian Horse Global Cup, organized by Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, or BRIEF. Present were the President of BRIEF, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Al Nuaimi, the Director General of the Emirates Arabian Horse Society, Mohammed Ahmed Al Harbi, representatives of sponsoring companies, guests representative of stables, owners and fans. His Highness Sheikh Faisal affirmed that the support of His Majesty to Arabian Horse Beauty Shows contributed in maintaining this national heritage and enriching Bahraini equestrian sports. He hailed the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to the sport, noting that His Highness patronage of the show gave it a great incentive to succeed and pushed participants to perform their best. He noted the Federation's efforts to maintain the sport by organizing events concerned with highlighting Bahraini heritage in equestrian fields which has a positive effect in enhancing Bahrain's prestigious position on the global equestrian sports map as the shows have a large number of fans. His Highness hailed the technical levels of the participants and expressed appreciation for the efforts of the organizing committee to hold this event. He congratulated and crowned the first place winners 
and wished good luck to the rest of the participants in upcoming shows. Sheikh Faisal received a commemorative gift from the Director General of the Emirates Arabian Horse Society. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa Al Mubarak, and the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, paid an inspection visit to the infrastructure development projects being implemented as part of the third package projects to develop roads, sewage networks, and municipalities in the eighth constituency of the capital governorate. Al Mubarak affirmed that the ministry is keen in developing services to cover the needs of all, including people with disabilities and the elderly. Al Hawaj noted that the ministry is currently implementing projects to serve the East Citra Housing Project, where the main sewage line project is being implemented to serve the housing city, in addition to road projects that provide outlets for the project to serve residents and facilitate their transportation. <coughs> Edama, the real estate arm of the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Bahrain Mumtalakat, signed a 25-year lease agreement with Bahrain Titanium, a subsidiary of Interlink Metals and Chemicals. As per the agreement, an industrial plot of land with an area of 50,000 square meters will be leased in Asker to build a multi-stage titanium factory with a value of over 200 million US dollars. The Minister of Sustainable Development and CEO of the Economic Development Board, Noor El Khulaif, said that the factory is one as the first one specializing in titanium in the region and will benefit from easy tax-free access to 25 markets around the world. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhru, said that attracting these companies to Bahrain plays a pivotal role in enhancing the diversity, quantity and overall investment value of the national industrial sector, adding that Interlink Metals and Chemicals has a good reputation as one of the largest titanium traders and suppliers in the world. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima al Sayrafi unveiled the slogan designating Manama as the Gulf Tourism Capital for 2024, along with a series of other events scheduled to run until the, year, or the end of the year. These festivities include diverse tourism and entertainment programs and offerings. Organized by the Ministry of Tourism, the Bahrain Tourism of Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, and several private sector tourism establishments. Al Sayrafi said that the unveiling of the slogan heralds the commencement of tourism and entertainment events to bolster regional tourism by attracting a greater influx of tourists. She said the celebration of Manama as the capital of Gulf tourism typifies Bahrain's successful endeavor in prioritizing the tourism sector within its development agenda. She also emphasized the ongoing efforts to introduce specialized tourism packages for GCC citizens and residents, aimed at attracting a greater number of visitors, and stated that this occasion is a unique opportunity to showcase Bahrain's role in fostering an integrated regional tourism ecosystem. While the tourism sector is considered an integral part of the economic development process in Bahrain, becoming a vital sector for economic diversification. More in this report. Due to its strategic location and its attractive and incubating tourism potential, the Kingdom of Bahrain plays an important role in creating an integrated tourism system at the regional level, encouraging intra-tourism between the GCC countries and coordinating with various regional and international bodies and institutions concerned with the tourism, travel, culture and entertainment sectors. 
Bahrain continues to exert efforts in developing the tourism industry at the Gulf and Arab levels, introducing historical cities and ancient civilizations in the region, and supporting the transformation into a sustainable tourism sector based on best international practices in order to enhance the kingdom's status at the global level. These important roles played by the kingdom comes within the tourism strategy 2022-2026 by facilitating entry, tourism attraction, marketing promotion and accommodation, business tourism, sports tourism, medical tourism and many more. All of these roles reflect positively on the tourism scene in the kingdom, which is evident by the significant increase in the number of visitors coming to the kingdom of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain ranked second in the Arab world and 34th in the world for all its initi initiatives and programs in several fields, placing it in the category of countries with very high human development in the recently issued 2023-24 UN Human, human Development Report. Several aspects were evaluated, including the Human Development Index, which is linked to the basic dimensions of human development, including a long and healthy life, knowledge and a decent standard of living, which was confirmed by Bahrain's initiatives over the past years, especially in the health sector and its support to Bahraini citizens. Another aspect is the Gender Development Index, where Bahrain ranked in the third group, in addition to the Gender Inequality Index, which included dimensions such as reproductive health, empowerment and participation in the labour market. Empowerment is measured by women's health, seats in parliaments and the percentage of men and women who have at least some secondary education. Labour market participation is measured by the participation of both men and women in the labour force. Bahrain Airport Company BAC, uh, the operator and managing body of Bahrain International Airport, achieved its second consecutive ISO certification for quality management system, environmental management system and occupational health and safety management system. The recent attainment of the ISO certification serve as an assurance to stakeholders including passengers, customers, airlines and regulatory authorities that BAC is committed to adhering to best practices in quality health and safety and the environment. By embracing ISO standards, BAC demonstrates a proactive approach to continuous improvement and dedication to meeting the need of all stakeholders. In addition to addressing all challenges, mitigation risks and enhancing the overall performance in quality, health and safety and environmental management systems. BAC achieved ISO certification following a comprehensive evaluation process and extensive audit in its internal operations. This underscores BAC's commitment to providing exceptional services that meet both passenger and customer expectations and comply with relevant regulatory requirements.